we are. I'm BC. This is Spirit Cars. Our little deal, 1105, is brought to you by uh, SpiritCars.com. I got three things today. We're going to have water. We talk about water. And what was the others? We're going to talk about OEM. What is OEM? Anybody know what OEM is? I'm going to ask you later, so don't answer now, but you better think about it. Time's on. And uh, I was pointing to the camera and past the camera at Stephanie there. <laughs> but you can answer this one right now. Once in a blue moon, what is that? That would be for Stephanie. Um, it uh, doesn't happen very often. Doesn't happen very often. Yeah, that's the definition, once in a blue moon. That's Actually, it started, the expression started way, way, way back in literature, and it meant it never was going to happen. Once in a blue moon, like, it ain't going to happen. But, you know, if you got a volcano going on, most of the dust in the air filter out the blue rays, and you see a red moon sometimes, but if you get the bigger dust particles and the right kind of volcano happening, you will actually get a blue moon. There is such a thing as a blue moon. And then once every 33 months, I believe, there is two new moons in one month. So that second new moon in the month is called the blue moon. I don't know why, but here we have the blue moon. Oh, and there's a song. There's a song. Uh, once in a blue moon, a blue moon. Um, you want to sing it for us? Um, Josh. Josh, you watching? Are you watching, Josh? Go on YouTube and look it up. A blue moon or once in a blue moon. I think it's about some guy that once in a while gets it right, but very seldom. But his wife, there is girlfriend or whatever, puts up with him anyway. I think that's what it's about. Probably a country song, I would imagine. So post that up there for us. So anyway, we got. Rarely do you see a car like this. It's awesome. It's cool. It's way cool. This is Larry's blue moon. It's um. And rarely does it come on 1105. It's been here a while, and we've been doing some other projects. Uh, we got these over here coming together. Eddie's been terminating wires, and I'm running wires on this one. So we're going to talk about water. You think you could, I can tie water and electricity together? Sure. Okay. And then we'll put OEM on this too. Come on, come on in here. Come into my office. This is my office today and yesterday. Such I'll finish up today. You know what water and electricity have in common? Um, okay, I'll just tell you. They both can hurt. They both can hurt you if you aren't smart. Well, they both could be very powerful. They both move. They run. They flow. Um, water is all about gravity. I mean, it will go downhill. I was digging in my pond, digging a hole in my pond yesterday. I'm landscaping my pond. I got the tractor down there and haven't got it stuck yet. I kind of opened the <laughs> thing up, but I still got some water in there. And I was just really wishing, man, if my pond was on a bigger, higher spot of the property, I could just use my pond to uh, water the garden just by gravity, the flow of gravity. And you, you see water towers in, in, you know, communities. That's water goes up there in little amounts, but it's got all that pressure to push it down. You got creeks, you got rivers, you got um, dams, you got reservoirs, you got all different ways to manipulate and do water. Electricity is the same way. Positive is going to flow to the ground. It goes that direction. In a car, we do DC electricity, direct current. It's not alternating current. It doesn't go back and forth and grab the power up half of that going back and forth. It, it goes from positive to ground. And uh, all the different ways that it's manipulated in the in the circuits is almost like you put a dam in it or you put a reservoir in it or you put all the other things in it. Um, and generally, if you're going to have a problem, if I have a problem, mostly, if I connected something wrong or something, you know, I got something touching or something, that's always possible. But the biggest problem, if I go to start a car and it's not working properly, I probably don't have a ground right. And if your ground isn't correct, it will show up in the weirdest ways. I mean, you could have a a bad ground on a turn signal and, and it'll turn lights on and, and it'll do whatever it can to get to a ground and it'll take whatever path it can go and if you've got circuits in your in your car and a car like this one it's going to have a lot more than a tea bucket it's going to have windshield wipers it's got this really cool gauge package but it's got here why don't you why don't you show our, our gauges here 
Uh, you can kind of see that I don't have them bolted in yet, but I got them fitting. We've got a, the heater and the air conditioner behind there. Um, this is a temperature sender, so this will go up in the ductwork to let me know. Um, so we've kind of spaced everything. It's going to have an overhead console. You can see, matter of fact, I don't have this wiper in here because the last video we did, I think, was me showing the wipers, and I took this one out just to show that. But we're going to put our overhead switch um, for the wiper switch up here, and it's got a park on it, which means you have to have a there's a circuit in there to make that stop where you want it to stop. It'll continue to go until it gets to its park position once you turn it off. Um, lots of different things. I'm kind of a rebellious guy anyway. I would never like to follow the rules. So it was good for me to get the kind of job where I get to make up the rules. And then especially doing what we do here, I get to make up the directions. So I make rules for other people. And. Uh, it's just arbitrary. It, a lot of things it's just, you know, if I put this switch here or if I put it here, it doesn't really matter. This would be on top of the steering column, which is probably not as convenient. I really can't put it here, which I probably would have, except for the fact I've got some metal reinforcement behind here and I couldn't get my switch here. So, I mean, there's just a multiple um, options for where that switch is going to be. And when it comes to wiring, you don't get those kind of options. I've got I've got to terminate all these wires and and they have got to go where they go. <laughs> if, if you don't put them where they go, it will not work. You just don't have options. It, it's a, I mean, there's theory and it is what it is. Um, a lot of it's pretty basic, pretty simple, but uh, you know, it's good to have a schematic. And if you don't follow the rules and if you can't, and, and different people have different talents. I'm not saying not to attempt wiring your car, but if it's something that you really don't get, maybe it's better to have someone to to help you out with it a little bit, especially on a bigger car that has so many. I've got a, this is going to have a, a key fob that's going to have, um, we'll open the doors with a button. And this has got so many options, I can do multiple things. I could open the trunk with a button, I could do whatever I want. But again, I've got to, you know, it's got not just these spade connectors, but it's got a plug-in. It's got, looks like it's got about 12, 10 wires <laughs> in the plug-in. So they, they've all go, got to go where they got to go. Putting uh, the fan in, this is a relay right here. Um, this is probably a horn relay, I can't see, but the reason for a relay is uh, especially in a fan or a horn, something that draws a lot of current, that initial current um, is going to draw too many amps. So instead of um, turning it on directly with a switch, you turn a relay on, which will take less amps to turn that relay on, and the relay makes a quick connection then, and then that turns your, your power on with a relay. So there'll be a, a relay for your fan here, which I've got to install, and, and there's just a lot of, a lot of thought that goes into um, wiring a car like this. Am I making sense here at all? Am I, am I telling people, am I scaring anybody? I don't want to scare anybody. OEM. I'm going to bring it back to, what does that mean? OEM. Surely somebody's answered by now. I'll give you a second. OEM. The car guy's going to know if you get an OEM part. Man, it's awesome. This is what I don't, this is not OEM. This, this, this looks horrible, don't it? You like that? No. Would this be a better OEM? Yes. What does that mean? Uh, okay, I, that I've got, is. I don't know where I got them, but I've got literally hundreds of these. It don't fit on this as the headlight switch. Oh. It don't fit on there, so I'm going to have to just drill and tap it to fit it on there, but that looks much cooler, don't it? It looks a lot better. This is an official OEM part. You know why? No because we are the original equipment manufacturer here. Uh -huh. And I decide, if you go to Ford, if you go to Chevy, Chevy, um, back in the day, it was kind of my dream, there was a, if you got an old Chevy car and the kick plate here, there's a little emblem down there that says Body by Fisher. Fisher Body made the bodies for GM. So General Motors didn't make their bodies, Fisher Body made them, but they went on General Motors, so it was an OEM part. Um, Delco Remy, there's all kind of companies that build parts for the manufacturers 
and just because the manufacturer didn't make it, they used it, and that made it an original equipment manufactured part. So I always wanted to have Body by BC. It said Body by Fisher when I was in high school. It's like, I want it. So I guess I got to do that. It's Body by BC except Spirit Cars. So OEM, Original Equipment Manufacturer. So point of OEM. See these gauges here, or these switches here? Yes. It comes in a kit. We don't generally, this is vintage air, a good quality product. We, we use Southern Air, which is a, a little smaller unit and fits in here much better. Um, we made this work, doesn't give me a whole lot of room behind here for my gauges. I can get them in, but I'm pushing against some of the duct work. And this one's deeper, so I can get it on that side, but I'm going to have to push it in, tighten it up. It's going to work fine. But these gauges came in this funky looking plastic little thing that there was no place good for it to look. Don't fret. If you're building the car, you are the original equipment manufacturer. Remember, you're building your own car. So just because someone else thinks it was cool, or probably they said, oh, let's just make it generically like this so everybody can just hear, well, just one size fits all, which it don't. You don't have to do that. You don't have to use that. So I took these little tabs, and luckily they built them heavy duty, and and they were able to. I took a razor blade and carefully peeled them off, and I redrilled the holes here and stuck my tabs so you can actually tell what it is, and the knobs will just go on to here. And so my this is my heater controls. Works out good. I put my ignition switch here. I like the placement of it. Looks good. It all looks conformed. I added my ductwork. So here's for my AC and heat. You can see up on top here, I've got some vents for the defroster. Works out pretty good. I'm probably forgetting something. But I mean, we'll need, so we need more controls. I mean, this is a heater control. So I'm gonna mount this outside the car. And uh, again, it, it takes a circuit to turn this on. So all it does is a flap in here that's gonna open and close this to let the heat come from your radiator in through the um, through the car into basically another radiator in here to blow the heat off of, um, and then back out. So this will go on the outside of the car. The electronics hook into here. Uh, man, that's not probably not it. I think there's this is probably it. So it's got relays. It's got more more switches, more buttons, more again. Think it out. Plan it out. Think where you're going to run your wires. I've taken wires here. This is coming down, coming out. I've got a little slot here. We'll tape this down. The carpet will hide it. This is my wires going to the back. I'm running my wires out here. It's going to come along the frame. This is going to be for my it's got an electronic uh, a speed sensor that will go to the transmission and my brake, uh, brake light switch will be there. Just Think it out before you do it. Again, it's a lot easier to bench build a wiring kit to at least get the basics. Because if there's a lot of wires under here, if I've got to do all this up under there, it's going to be pretty tough to do that. But uh, it's coming together. We're looking looking like uh, maybe today I'm going to have this thing so we can at least get all the wires to where they can be terminated on the motor. i got a few left here. This is a uh, my power doors, my power windows. Um, I ran a wire back for the uh, the trunk light, although Larry hasn't said if he wants one or not. They've got some uh, mercury sensor type ones that if you wanted a, a, a light in your trunk, you could do that. Also, we're going to have a dome light in this one. Um, I mean, there's no limit to the amount of electronics you can put in a car or any more cars you've got. I mean, we've done them with you know, outside temperature, inside temperature, compasses, electronics, all kinds of stuff. So there's no limit to what you can add to a car. But for today, the blue moon, once in a blue moon, you get to see it. So here you go, Larry, we're seeing it. And we're gonna see Larry down here at the end of the month. My son sent me the quote for the day. So we're not gonna do the yellow books. And I don't think he's got a, uh, now, this is by Anonymous, so if you know who, if you wrote this, take credit for it. If you didn't write it, don't take credit for somebody else. But anyway, it says, 
Well, he says, I saw this quote and really liked it. Enthusiasm is common. Endurance is rare. And that is true. In today's world, we can all get pretty excited, but this is about the long haul. This is about the, the, the endurance of getting it done. It, build a car like this, it may take you more than a couple weeks. It may take you more than a couple months. If you're doing it home, if it's your first time, it may take you a while to get her done. But just persevere. You can get it. And the worst thing that can happen is if you do something wrong and you got to back up and redo it and go forward. I mean, it came from nothing. So surely when we come from nothing, we can always keep moving ahead once we have something to start with. So that's it for today. What does OEM mean? Um, Golly. Uh, original. Equipment manufacturers. Yeah. So you all are original equipment manufacturers. You take what parts you get and you turn it into whatever it is you want because you are the manufacturer of your own car when you build a car, especially from Spirit Industries. We help you get that done. And um, anyway, that's it for today. We got one more day left. Today's Thursday, right? Mm -hmm. Tomorrow's Friday. We may see, I don't know what we'll see tomorrow, but we'll be here. Have a good day.